We've got a lot to cover today, or at least I don't. Um, so, uh, viewers that are in the pipeline has not changed a lot. We have, let me just compare this to my other display. Uh, we have the HTTP update viewer, which of course also includes the coroutines changes and the Vivox changes. Um, currently that viewer, the currently released viewer in that stream has HTTP pipelining disabled due to a bug. And that did a lot for the crash rate, but we want to fix it before we release that. So we're going to try to do that uh, before we promote that. There's a maintenance viewer out that's doing just fine. Uh, and of course, the quick graphics viewer, which we're still doing another round of changes on to uh, clean up some of the things that people pointed out about how it's doing the complexity calculations. So those changes should all come out in the next uh, week or two, and then we'll, we'll, that will be eligible for promotion. Uh, then, of course, there are project viewers still out there for the Bento project. Uh, we hope to have a freeze on the skeleton changes for that pretty soon, and then it will be just a question of fixing uh, the whatever set of bugs we decide have to be fixed before that can go to production, uh, at which point those features will be enabled for Agni. Um, no predicted timeline for that at this point. Uh, and the Rift Viewer, which we should have an update for pretty soon, uh, with which will update to the the newest SDK. Uh, that will be at this point Windows only. Um, how much you know support we'll have on the Mac is is very much up in the air at this point because the Oculus SDK doesn't support it. So. Uh, so that's pretty much where the release pipeline is right now. And so the floor is open. Uh, the only question I'd have would be about the uh, quick graphics. Any idea of how bad the bugs are? Uh, well, there, there are a couple of, there, there, not, there are none that are, that are terrible. Um, blocked avatars aren't being rendered correctly. That, we know what the fix is. We just haven't gotten it in, into the build yet. Um, uh, materials are not being accounted for correctly. And right now, it's costing too much to use alpha masking instead of alpha blending. So we're going we're gonna to fix all of those things, um, which will change how uh, things. We've already got fixes for a couple of other stuff, a couple of other things that were wrong in the existing build uh, right now it always does your complexity calculation based on uh, level of de detail equal to three and um, the new version will do it based on whatever the current LOD is so if you've if you if, if you have a if you have a mesh that has or, or, or whatever that has very different number of uh, vertices and so forth at different LODs. Um, the the complexity calculation will change accordingly, uh, depending on which one you're actively using. Uh, so, um, and that's the stuff that's on the must fix list for that, uh, and then it will be eligible for promotion. So, I mean, otherwise, there's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's not. It's, in fact, it's less crashy than, on the test cohort, it's less crashy than releases. Uh, and interestingly, uh, people are um, staying on it longer. The average session length is significantly longer than release. It's kind of a weird that, but there it is. Well, actually, that doesn't surprise me too much, but that's uh, yeah. another story. Um, so, uh, and, uh, you know, other stuff we're working on, but which has not gotten close to having a, a visible 
viewer at this point is we we are actively engaged in in, in doing the 64-bit update. So uh, I I think it will probably be a few weeks before we have a project viewer in that. But uh, yeah, we're looking forward to that a lot. Actually, we are working on it. And once we've done that, we'll have 64-bit versions of the the pre-built Havoc extensions library for you all to use. So for you know anybody who's got that license, and that will uh, make some people happy. And some of our developers, at least. Maybe maybe we'll improve the crash rate. I don't know. We'll see. Well, um, it certainly seemed to make a big difference for us, 64 versus 32, the crash rate was uh, considerably different. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to doing that experiment. I think that on that with the uh, 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 quick graphics or jelly babies, whatever you want to call them, will uh, really improve people's performance and stability. Right. Uh, with that one... We will no longer support 32-bit only Macs, but uh, that's hardly anybody at this point. What has been changed in the Bento project so far? You mean from the first release of, of Bento? Yeah. Uh, well, we've been experimenting with reconfiguring some of the bones and we've been working on uh, the big area of focus has been on figuring out what are the different circumstances under which uh, joints get out of position uh, so there 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 are a few different flavors of those um, some well some we haven't completely diagnosed there's there there are problems where you don't get all the joint update messages. Um, so on, we, we think that on, on really terrible networks, you, you might just not get, uh, you, you might not get um, all, the, all the updates to your joint positions when, when the mesh is being loaded from scratch. Um, and obviously that's going to leave you with some joints and if you moved one and you didn't get that update, then you're going to get a weird situation. But that's probably not a normal circumstance, not the usual way that they go wrong. The other big cause of that appears to be using both joint positions in the mesh and rotation-based changes to the joint positions in an animation associated with the mesh. And if you only get one, then you, you, you get messed up. Or if they happen in the wrong order, you get messed up. And that's a, that's a tricky one because uh, it, it may well be that f for different users, you'll get them in different orders, right? So you, um, because one is, a, is, a, is fetched one way and the, another is fetched another way. And they, happen um, out of sync with each other so uh, and, and then the third one we're sure happens is that and and it has more to do with how avatars move and you see it a lot with the quadrupeds um, because they're doing different things with the with the arms uh, is that the uh, you get you get a sequence of animations that's supposed to play. Your, your, your AO wants to play animation A and then animation B, and it'll play animation A, and then there'll be a, a small break in time before it begins playing animation B. And that might be because the script hasn't had a chance to run yet and tell it to run animation B, or it might be because animation B hasn't finished loading yet. But in the meantime, there's a little gap of time where the server decides that there's no animation playing and therefore you should play the default animation and the default animation from out of the default animation table does something that doesn't actually fit wasn't expected for that avatar shape and so the the um, the 
a little bit of that one plays before and and you yeah Welcome the way you to see that episode is you cross your three of the pc world show and what it's we've a web- found experiment well that's the, one of the classic symptoms i mean it can manifest other ways i suppose but that's that's one of the cra- classic ones the the way we found is that that's that's actually um completely eliminated on the test cases we've looked at if you if instead of using a script based AO to do the motion to do the sequence of motions, you load those motions into the default animation table using the newer animation override interface. And then you just don't get the crossing front legs problem anymore. It just goes away. Um, so uh people should be thinking about replacing their AOs with ones that that use the default animation table rather than monitoring pulling pulling what the avatar is doing and and, and playing scripts explicitly um, it's uh no you, well it depends on what you're trying to accomplish with the AO whether you still have to pull but you you can just write all the entries in the table if you you know if if what you always want to do for flying is is a particular animation just write that into the flying animation table and uh, entry and then you're you're good you don't have to do anything else so we've been we've been talking about you know other ways to extend and clean that up uh, but whether or not we'll make any of those changes is part of into is, is a different question but if you're having trouble with Animation's not playing cleanly in the way you want. Um, well, I'd I'd appreciate I'd appreciate a, a carefully thought out and detailed email about what what difficulties you had. Okay, Oz at LindenLab.com or, or file a Jira if you'd rather. Um, so. Uh, <clears throat> Because that that would be that would be very interesting. I'd, l- I'd love to know. I'd love to know details about why using that interface as a primary way of controlling animations is is not what you were looking for. Um, at least for all the standard animations, right? So uh, so we're studying those problems, and those are all problems that are on the on the hit list. We're going to try and get the various joint position issues and and animation issues as much as we can cleaned up before we decide that bento is is done we probably will have a decision in the next couple of weeks on the final or at least pseudo final set of bones that is we'll we'll do an update to the skeleton uh in the in the beta um, and, a, and an updated viewer that has that updated skeleton, and uh, we will uh, we will probably then say, okay, we think this is final from here on in. It's only bugs in the skeleton that we're that we're concerned about. Uh, just so that you know, at some point you have to you have to draw a line and say this is in, that anything else is out. So, and and we've got a we've got a bunch of proposals for for what to change there. So. Uh, we're we're going through those, and hope to get a decision, a final decision on that very 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 soon. Uh, that project is is coming along nicely, but uh, there's still work to do. The only other thing I really oh, go ahead, Katie. Uh, so we do have some updates to CEF. Uh, and there was or actually one of them, one of the fixes we got uh, from uh, ultimately from Drake. Um, and that update, I think, has gone out or is about to. Uh, let me see. When did that? When did that get updated? Uh, I'm I'm not sure. Anyway, that the 
that that fix is already in Firestorm because that's how we heard about it. Uh, but it's uh, and there's there are still some some other relatively minor bugs that we're still working on, but um, it's it's mostly it's mostly pretty good. It, there will be some fixes for it in the in the next maintenance viewer. I mean, if there are specific issues you're concerned with, um, you know, feel free to to uh, ping me about the status of any particular jurists that, that are freaking you out. Um, we have had a bunch of problems with that, with uh, a couple of different antivirus packages that are unhappy with it, but there's not a lot we can do about all of that. Webroot. Yeah. Yes. Worley right. likes to call it web rot. Web rot, yes. Uh, but with the uh, in the current Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about the pipelining with, with CEF. I, I don't know about any issues there. Um, it is important to get that done, though, because in the spring, we are going to turn off the ability to deal with anything that do, has to do with money, unless you have TLS version 1.2, which the only way to get that out of our code base is CEF. And that's... You know, driven by compliance issues, we have to we have to do that if we're going to handle money. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're, uh, our devs are on top of that. The only other thing yeah. I had was actually more to do with uh, something server side. Uh, uh, just a silly question. Uh, beginning shortly before Christmas, we started noticing some strange things with the interest list. Uh, uh, the avatars above uh, a thousand meters not appearing in the right position. Uh, we've had a couple uh, instances where uh, there's people standing right beside you, but you can't see them. You can't see their tag. Uh, you can't see anything, but you can hear them. They show up on your radar. You, you can see their local chat. Um, sometimes they wind up down at zero zero zero, and uh, sometimes they wind up just, you know, a couple hundred meters up in the air or in different places. Um, it, it, it's just weird, and I just don't know if it was something that was changed server side that might have done that, something to do with the interest we, list or something. We have, we have not intentionally changed anything in the interest list lately. Okay. Uh, just so I, I just thought I'd bring that up because it's really one of those weird weird ones where they can and be standing right beside you. Yeah, and it started just just before Christmas, actually. Um, well, I, I, I wonder if it's even related to interest list, because I know the other day I was talking with Flossie, and I could see her originally, and then suddenly I couldn't see her. And when I would zoom in on her avatar, my camera would move around as if she was standing right there, you know, a couple of meters from me. But there was no no name tag, she was still on radar, I couldn't see her, but it was clear that the viewer thought she was still there and knew where she was moving. And it was just really odd. I don't recall having heard about this before. So, um, obviously, if you can find a way to repro it, that's interesting, but if you can't, it's not the sort of thing that is otherwise actionable. I mean, there's no way I can just assign a developer to wander around in the world to see if this ever happens, and if it does, find yeah. out why. Yeah, um, I, I think I think what I'll be recommending to our team is that we start, uh, when that happens, to log out, collect your logs, and 
and, that, and file a JIRA. That, that couldn't hurt. And, uh, and if you do that, make sure that you have told us that it's, you know, exactly, very carefully, exactly when and where it happened and get the report, the complete report in uh, as quickly as possible because the server logs we would need to look at to, to try to pair it up with what's going on on the server aren't kept for very long. Yeah. Right? Server yeah, logs or go away. Like yeah. Hmm? Uh, uh, it's it, roughly 48 hours or something like that. If it, it's, it's a few days, but yeah. it, it's, uh, and it varies a little bit. Sometimes we, we set it to be longer on certain release channels if we're, if we think it's going to be uh, something that we want to look at, but we, we can keep them for a little longer if we, if we have done so intentionally, but the, I, th I think the default is just three days for, for, um, for the full server log. There's, there's data that's saved from the server logs that lasts longer than that, but, uh, but it's, it's not a complete data set. That, so, so for something where we need to go back and look at what was happening when bug XYZ occurred, uh, we need to know, and, and since those logs are really big, um, having as narrow as possible a time window to look in is, um, makes a, a very big difference to how much, how much, how likely okay. it is that we're going to find the, the information we need. Okay, thank you, and uh, especially thank you since it's really not related to the viewer. It's more uh, we think it's related to the server, but right. well, you never I guess know. We'll find um, out, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's fine. Um, so, uh, next meeting, next one of these should be in two weeks, I think. I don't. Know. Think there's any exception cases coming up? Uh, yeah, that's what it is on my calendar. Uh, so we we have that, and uh, Monday is a Linden Lab holiday. So uh, anything you had ex been expecting to have happen with a Linden on Monday isn't going to. For those of you who, on occasion, show up at my Open developer meeting, it will be happening on Tuesday. Uh, and in fact, um, I'm going to just move that meeting to Tuesdays from now on so that I don't get tripped up by Monday holidays. Or did I move that? No, I moved it to Wednesday. That's right. I moved it to Wednesday. So my my, what is it, 7 a.m. Second Lifetime Open Development User Group is now on Wednesdays. Trying to move meetings off of Mondays and Fridays. At some point I may move this one off Fridays too, but we'll see. For now we'll just leave it on Fridays, every other Friday. Yeah, moved it to Wednesdays. So, same time, just Wednesday. All right, I believe we are adjourned. Cool. Have fun getting dunked, us. <laughs> yeah. And writer, uh, you shouldn't let people give you the gears like that, man. I know, bad joke. See you later, folks. Poof. Yeah, see you later. Bye.